This is more or less a continuation of the talk I gave at uh, DEF CON 4. Uh, less guess, more fun, optimizing smart contracts to you. It's not a problem if you haven't seen that talk, uh, just for context. Uh, in that talk, uh, I explained how we want to, or we wanted to leverage an intermediate language called Hugo, so that uh, the Synergy compiler has <coughs> better readable generator and uh, an optimizer and in general more flexi flexibility towards which backend we compile so for example you can be compiled to EVM to EWASM EVM 1.5 or I don't know maybe LVM uh, <coughs> and uh, on the bottom here you can see some example U code it's uh, an allocation or it's a standard solidity allocator memory allocator and I think it's rather obvious what it does and uh, easy to know. At least if you know some of the idea of it. Okay, uh, what did we do? So this was basically a recap of the talk of last year. What happened after that? Uh, we started uh, the rewrite of the Solidity code generator to you and we're kind of halfway there. Um, this will be the first third of the talk. Then uh, I will tell you how you can generate eWASM code from Solidity. And the last part will be about the UART. Uh, okay, uh, <coughs> the code generator. We are actually <coughs> quite far with that. We had to stop at some point because we want to release Solidity 060 soon with new uh, features and uh, yeah, breaking changes. We are, yeah, it is possible to compile the ERC20 contract, so general ERC20 contract written in Solidity, including mappings, events uh, require, and whatever is, is necessary. Um, the new code generator, generator has a breaking change, that is that it will automatically revert on arithmetic overflow. The the current code generator only reverts on division by zero and similar things, and the new code generator will also revert on yeah, multiplication and addition overflow. And the reason, the main reason why we didn't do that for the old code generator is because it, uh, yeah, these checks will have branches, and uh, the old optimizer cannot really follow the code there. But the new optimizer, yeah, we'll see in the third part of this talk. And uh, it was also much easier to write uh, using the new um, because <coughs> it might actually look like that, but you will have does not have the concept of stack. It only has local variables, and these are there's a rather direct translation from the local variables to a stack machine. But in general, you do not need to worry about the stack layout. So. Um, there is one of the most complex uh, parts in the Solidity code generator is uh, internal function calls because the call of code has so many uh, parameters, and it also depends whether one, whether you call a library or a regular function or whether you specify the gas or whether you specify the value and so on. So there is uh, yeah different ways to use the call of code. And all the time you have to uh, keep track of where everything is on the stack in the old code generator. And the new code generator just uh, reference stuff by their names. So it's just guess as, as a value. And um, 
Another thing is uh, that, so when the old code generator, uh, we forgot to or did not yet implement a certain feature, but by accident the stack layout is correct, then this will lead to code that is actually generated and will of course do something invalid. In the new code generator, um, sub-expressions are always referenced by their identifier, and if the code generation of that sub-expression is not implemented, then the identifier will just not exist in the UL code, so we have an additional level of checks on the intermediate language, and this will be uh, detected and removed. Okay, how can you actually use it? Um, I will only show you how to use it on the command line. The standard JSON also works, but it's more complicated on the screen here. So, so C minus minus IR will generate your code from the Solidity code, and um, for safety reason, we do not support a direct translation from Solidity through Yule to EVM, because it's still in the kind of experimental uh, stage. Um, so you have to, yeah, copy the output of the first stage and then rerun the Solidity compiler in assembly mode and then transform the Yule code to EVM bytecode. Uh, yeah, let's take a look at how that then looks in practice. So this is an example ERC20 contract, or a part of an uh, ERC20 contract. Uh, we have an event, uh, we have the mapping of the balances, uh, total supply, and a mint function that generates tokens, which is, uh, which is called in the constructor. So the sender uh, gets 20 coins. And the mint function uh, starts with this uh, require call, so the, the address to mint to cannot be the zero address. And then total supply balances is modified and the uh, transfer event is emitted. Uh, now, we compile that to you. And so this is not the uh, code directly generated by the code generator, but this is the code after optimization. Um, and uh, I think it's really nice that this is still nicely reviewed. At least I would say, let's, let's get into the detail, uh, <laughs> and then you will see. <laughs> um, but uh, you see that it still has <coughs> expressions. And uh, yeah, if, so you would even see the mint function call here, and you would recognize the name mint. The, the issue here is just that the, the mint function in the init context is only called once, and because of that it's of course inline, and so the function is called. Uh, but we, so uh, it starts with uh, initializing the memory allocator, then we have the call value check, so, if, so because the constructor is not payable. And then <coughs> the second thing here is uh, the require that the address we mint to is not zero. And <coughs> You actually see the the, the, the the error string here. Uh, ERC20 mint to the zero address. Uh, so this uh, this block here is the require call, and then uh, we update the total supply. But this this is this is a comment I added manually. Um, yeah, you take the stuff that is take the data that is uh, currently at uh, storage location two. You add 20 and you store it again. Now um, it it calls uh, it calls a user defined function called check add. This is the the overflow check I was talking about earlier, and uh, that is one of the two functions that is not visible on the screen here. And the rest of so the rest of the code is all the all there is to the constructor. So this is the full constructor code missing two small functions. And now uh, we update the balances. So this is still a kind of a problem. Uh, there is a function called mapping index access t mapping and so on. It, it's a little bit longer. So uh, the reason is that so this is the the index access uh, helper function for storage mappings, and the name is generated from the type. And I think we still have to come up with a way to shorten it, so it's very really cool. Um, yeah, and another issue here is uh, you see the mapping index access. The function I was just talking about, it's called here, and it's also called here again with the same parameters. Uh, usually the optimizer is able to combine that and call it only once. The problem here is that uh, uh, it calls the catch-up function, which 
works on memory. Because of that, it has to access the memory, and uh, um, the optimizer cannot yet recognize that writing this stuff, so the, the stuff that is written in the first call and the stuff that is written in the second call, they do not conflict because it's exactly the same. So they write to the same memory location. Because of that, it can't really uh, swap them. But uh, it should detect that it's actually the same stuff that is written. OK, uh, let me speak a little. Um, yeah, talking about bytecode size, uh, I'm not sure if you can compare these numbers with the earlier talk, because this is uh, 256 uh, bit EVM code. And I think it's also a lot more of ERC20 than there was in the WebAssembly challenge. Uh, but we can compare the, the compiler that goes via Yule and the compiler that does not go via Yule. Um, so the, the current compiler takes 1,747 bytes. Um, that's a bit unfair because it does not include overflow checks. If we add the overflow checks, it's 1,805. And uh, if you do that via Yule, it's 2,162. So it shows that there's still some work to do. Actually, I did not yet find the time to see where it has these additional bytes. Uh, so it might be just an easy fix. OK, uh, WebAssembly. Um, similar to SOLC minus minus IR, you can use SOLC minus minus EWASM. It will, so, and this will actually generate uh, EWASM text representation in one run. Um, the thing is, it's not tested at all. Uh, and uh, it can really deploy contract. It's not tested yet at all because we couldn't yet find a, a good execution environment we can run it against. And it can't yet deploy contracts, and the reason for that is that we have not implemented the uh, transform from WebAssembly text representation to WebAssembly binary representation, and you need that for deploying the, for actually deploying the contract. So, because it needs to return the binary, optimal, uh, the, the binary representation. OK, uh, how does the uh, compiler to eWASM work? Um, it takes the regular EVM Yule code. So it starts exactly at the point where the uh, solidity to Yule to EVM uh, compiler went. And so you have to, you have to transform 256 uh, bit code to 64 bit code. And this is done by splitting all the Yule variables into four variables. And uh, at that point, we have some kind of a, a mix of uh, WebAssembly Yule dialect and EVM Yule dialect, because we still use the EVM opcodes, but we already use 64-bit variables. And then we add uh, yeah, kind of a library code that implements all EVM opcodes as user-defined functions using the EVM built-in, uh, the, the eWASM built-in functions. And at that point, we have uh, eWASM flavored view, and we run the regular optimizer, would also run on EVM view with slight modifications uh, because we have different built-in functions. And uh, yeah, it turns out that we are able to reuse almost all of the components of the EVM Yule optimizer. And um, yeah, it, it generates a kind of a yeah, pretty straight, straightforward transformation, I would say. Um, yeah, let's take a look at a specific sub example. Uh, we just use, we just store the current block gas limit at position zero in memory. Uh, this, yeah. I have to warn you because of the 256-bit, 64-bit thing, this will look a little bit complicated. Mm -hmm. um, okay, what we do is gas limit returns a 256-bit value, so we have to split that into four variables, and uh, that's what is done here in the beginning. So we call gas limit and assign it to four variables, and then we call end store. That is the kind of pseudo uh, hybrid EVM eWASM. Uh, function that takes eight parameters, so four for the address and four for the value. 
And then we add the uh, implementations of the EVM of codes in uh, using WebAssembly built-ins. So gas limit, for example, just calls eth.get block gas limit. And then mstore, uh, we need to perform Indian swapping because uh, what assembly is a lit ending machine, but everything else is behind the machine. Okay, this looks really complicated, but uh, if you apply the optimizer, then you will of course inline the gas limit call here and also remove all the other variables we don't need anymore. <coughs> and um, also the M store, it has tons of constants here, so it pr probably makes sense to also inline that. And then it will look like this. Um, so only the end gets what is left for this. Okay, uh, now third part, third part of the talk, the, what we did on the U optimizer. Um, all, all components of the optimizer take your code, uh, transform it, and output your code again. So it's no reduction <coughs> in expressivity or something like that. Uh, so all the modules are <coughs> simple and can be combined in an arbitrary way. If, if all the modules are correct, then the whole optimizer is correct. Um, it turned out that we need a little bit more modules than we initially thought. We currently have uh, roughly 25. Uh, but most of the modules are really, really tiny. And uh, there are only two to three components that really store opaque data structures. So <coughs> three minutes only. Okay, let's speed up a little bit. Uh, so for example, uh, the conditional simplifier, we still have to come up with another name for that module. Uh, it takes a look at branches. So for example, if C stop, the, the body of this if uh, always terminates. So after the body, you, need, you, you know that C is false or zero. So the only thing that this does is it injects assignments of this form after uh, terminating branches. And uh, other modules in the optimizer can pick that up and use that information. But it's, the information is visible in the code. It's not stored in some uh, data structure you would have to look into and if there's uh, somewhere else. Um, Yeah, let's skip that and talk about the plans for the future. Memory types, uh, we already saw that we have some problems with memory. This will hopefully be solved by adding memory chunks as a built-in type into you. Um, that way different memory stores to different data structure are fully independent because it uses kind of a different handle to access memory. Um, also, we're thinking about adding a super optimizer, so an optimizer that takes a really long time and tries to really crunch the numbers and find a, a good way to, to optimize the code. And uh, that can have, that can maybe have shortcuts if you want to recompile stuff, but it's, it's faster. And uh, we're thinking about adding a genetic algorithm to find a good order for applying the steps. So as I already said, each step individually should be correct. The order uh, doesn't matter for correctness, but it matters for efficiency. And uh, yeah, it's kind of hard to manually come up with a good order to apply them, so we want to to find a generic way uh, yeah, to come up with a good sequence of these steps. Okay, I'm not sure if there's still time for questions, but thanks for your attention.